Hello, I'm Harlan. Now today we're going to talk about communicating with God. God to most people are like termites. They never do see Him till their house falls in. And they don't know where God is. They don't know how to communicate with God. And answer this simple question. Is God in here? It says Holy Bible. Is God in here? Or is God in here? I'm the temple of God. I'm the son of God. Is God in here? Or is God sitting up on a throne out there about 10,000 miles, old gray-headed man with a, a gray beard, and you're praying to him, Our Father, which art in heaven. You go to church and they pray, Our Father, which art in heaven. They don't know God. Get out of that place. They don't know God. That's old covenant. That's an old covenant. You go to church, and they say, Open your Bibles to Acts or so. Get out of there. They don't know God. They do not know God. He's not in a book, and He sure is not in them churches, and He's not 10,000 miles up there. Now listen closely today as you learn how to communicate with God and how that God is. Let me tell you a little secret. And I've seen it with my own eyeballs. Most people never know God is there until they die. When they die, they'll come back and look at me and their, their eyes are so shiny and everything. They'll say, there's something over there. I seen God. I seen Jesus. They never see him until they die. And so this is what has happened when King James, Constantine and them put God in a book instead of putting him in the temple. Now notice these things when I go through them. You think, you think about it. Today if I pray, I pray in the Holy Ghost. And I, I say, blessed spirit of truth. And then I'll get an answer from God. God controls us by the Holy Ghost. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're not controlled by God. Now listen to how our first church was. Then I want to give you some truth you can live with. And God's voice is going to be heard again in the land. Jesus revealed it. People used to preach the gospel with the Holy Ghost that come down. The Spirit was leading them everywhere. They didn't have no Bible. Hey! They didn't have a Bible until the printing press. All they had was the Holy Ghost. Now listen to how this brother says this. He says, in 2 Corinthians, he said, The communion of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> how many people you know talk to the Holy Ghost but me? I talk to the Holy Ghost. I say, Blessed Holy Spirit, help these people that's listening to me learn this so they can talk to God. You can't be a son or daughter of God if you don't have the Holy Ghost in you. I'm the temple of God. If you're going to get a word from God, you're going to get it from Peter, Paul, or me. You understand that? It comes by His children. They have to be sanctified, set free, and then God speaks in them. Now, Second Corinthians, Paul said, Did you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me? Christ speaking in me. See, you never heard nobody say the Bible's an honor. Where did I get that? You never heard nobody say the Bible is the mark of the beast. Where did I get that? It, it's never been spoken before in history. I got it because God spoke it to me, in me. He puts me in a trap. See, Jesus will speak to the Holy Ghost and tell him what to do with you. He controls you and he teaches you. Okay? Jude said, praying in the Holy Ghost. When you go to church, does people pray in the Holy Ghost? Our Father, which art in heaven... <laughs> Dumb, boy. Dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Stupid, 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 ignorant, ignorant. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You pray in the Holy Ghost. If I'm praying now, I say, Blessed Spirit of Truth, help me now. Watch this. All was filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, people believe a devil can speak in somebody, but when you tell them God's speaking in me, they can't believe that. They can't believe that. They've got one out of a thousand believes that I've got God in me. You believe it's in here. And this thing's dead as Hogan's ghost. It ain't got it in there. The Holy Ghost said, separate me, Paulus and Paul, for the work. See, the Holy Ghost said that. Now, why didn't you hear in the, in the book of Acts uh, the apostles praying all the time? They didn't pray because they had God in them. God was already there. They didn't pray to God way out yonder. He was here. The Holy Ghost was speaking in them. And 
While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said, three men seek you. See, Jesus had given Peter a vision. And he didn't know what it meant, but he's going to send him to the Gentile. And while he thought on it, the Spirit spoke to him. See, God spoke to him. This is God in you. God said, I'll pour out my Spirit. This is God in us. And Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. He said, have you been so long with me, Philip? He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen a Son of God. You've seen a word from God. Now, I just have a portion. I'm not an apostle. I'm a witness. And I have God in me. And I'm telling you what God put in me. The Spirit said to Philip, join yourself to that church. Jesus didn't come down and tell Philip. The Holy Ghost was in Philip. He said, join yourself to that church. The Spirit spoke to him. Get this. You got God in you. Well, don't wait till you die to know that God's real. He's right here. He's just in another dimension. Because he's invisible, don't mean he's not real. The air you breathe is invisible. Keeps you alive. Okay. Now right here they said, For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. See, it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. Paul would say, The Spirit speaketh expressively. They went around with God in them. The devil had to stop this. The devil had to put God somewhere else. He couldn't leave him in us because, look at people, listen to me. They ask me all kinds of silly questions. They don't even know that God's in them. And Timothy said, Now neglect not the gift that is in you by, by prophecy and lay it on of hand. Why would they send Peter and John down to Samaria? Because they had God in them. They'd lay hands on people and the Holy Ghost come in them. This was God's sons and daughter. He lives in us. Hey, hey, wake up. And neglect not the gifts in you. And then Timothy, stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on my. I said, bless the Holy Spirit. Stir up. Tell these people this is the truth. I'm the temple of God and God speaks in me. And so is every other Holy Ghost person that's a son or daughter of God. God lives in you. Philip had four virgin daughters and they prophesied. And then Timothy, the good thing committed to you, kept by the Holy Ghost, which what? Dwells in us. God is the Holy Ghost. There's no difference in God and the Holy Ghost. God is the Holy Ghost. Because if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, you're done. All right. Romans 8 and 6. We know not what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, we don't know how to pray. I used to pray and pray and pray, and the Holy Ghost would pray for me. I get more done when the Holy Ghost prays for me, makes intercession for me. But by the time I've already got things figured out and prayed to Jesus, Paul one time had a thorn in the flesh and he had to get in touch with Jesus. Holy Ghost wouldn't do. He besought the Lord three times. And finally the Lord told him, my grace is sufficient for you. See, he had God in him. But he had to get in touch with Jesus because Jesus is our king. All right. Hebrews. They have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. We have to be partakers of the Holy Ghost. Most people's partakers of King James. That's all they got. God ain't in here. And we're the temple of the living God. I will dwell in them, walk in them, and I will be their God. This is the temple of God. If you're ever going to get a word from God, like the Bible's an idol, the Bible's the mark of the beast, and I've been telling you now for years, and you know God is in me. I, would, I couldn't have got these words nowhere else. I used to read 50 chapters of the Bible every day because I was stupid. Okay. Be you separate, and I will receive you. Okay, you got to be separate. That's hard to do in this world today. Really hard. 2 Corinthians, And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. See, God is going to be our God. He's our Father. Just like if you put your finger in your navel, it connected you to your mother. Well, your mother had a navel connected to your grandmother and to your great-grandmother. So we go all the way back. We're connected back to Eve because she's the mother of all living. We're all connected to God. He's our Father. And when He puts the Holy Ghost in you, you become a son of God, a daughter of God. And you pray to Him. He's right here with you. He's in me, and He's bearing witness in me. He said, I'm in Him. I'm in Him. That's what makes Him sanctified. That's what makes Him free. That's what makes Him speak these words. See, I'm not under the control of a church or of no dumb book. I'm not under the control of money. I love God. I'm under the control of of my Holy Father. Remember the communion of the Holy Ghost. And I thank God for the communion of the Holy Ghost. Remember, the Bible is an idol. The Bible is the mark of the beast and God dwells in us.